Welcome to our very final, our last official video of Project Skyfall. We made it. We made it. All in one piece. Well, at least most of us. That's called foreshadowing. I'm just kidding. Don't worry. Everything's well. So this is it. This is the drop video. Without further ado, let's get right into it. It was a beautiful Saturday afternoon when we geared up and prepped our skydiver, nicknamed Bond, James Bond. Starting off with the packing of the parachute, and it took me an annoying several tries to pack it as perfectly as I could. Being this the uh, first flight, I didn't want to screw it up by uh, having a parachute that didn't open properly. Man, that is probably the most garbage looking container I've ever packed. Dude, look how shitty that looks. <laughs> But once it was packed to my satisfaction, I hooked Bond into the container. Then I inserted the servo arm through the pack's hold down strap to keep the parachute packed away, inserted the battery and screwed on the front plate cover, placed the three mini cams onto his body and headed outside for the maiden flight. I hooked him up to the drone's tow line, turned on the drone and just like that, we're ready to fly. pull the arming pin out of his parachute. That's why I didn't open. Otherwise it deployed, completely totaled his legs. Don't go skydiving without a proper parachute, people. Yeah, so I wasn't exactly thrilled with myself after weeks and weeks of intensive labor working on this thing, only to fudge the first drop because of pilot error, forgetting to take out the packing pin before liftoff which held the container closed even though the servo successfully released the hold down strap. But onward we go. Life has no time for those who want to just sit around and complain. All right, so this is the damage report. Now, uh, obviously he went into the ground face first, but he kind of went on his side. He kind of That's when he kind of made impact on his side, probably like this. Legs first, snapped it, and then bent the arm because the joint here now uh, wobbles on the wrong axis. This shouldn't be too much of a, of a fix. Uh, it's already popped off the arm, but uh, I might be able to get that out of the body too. If not, maybe I can bend that, that joint back into place. We'll see. This just fell out, the screw insert. Um, this came down here in this corner. This, might, this will be the, the toughest, the tr trickiest part of the build. Um, what I'll end up doing is I'll end up cutting this jagged, these jagged parts off and this part off as well from the legs. And then I'll just, uh, glue on a new piece, stick it in there, glue that to the body. But, uh, this is going to be the difficult part with this, this screw insert. Um, it's like right on the joint. So we'll see what I do with that. Since he landed on his belly, it also damaged his belly cover, his chest cover chest plate um, all the damage though was on the bottom part right where these screws are inserted so I'm gonna have to replace this whole thing which sucks the back plate uh, didn't have any damage to it at all which was nice 
Uh, no damage to the container or parachute, obviously, but uh, as far as the internal hardware is concerned, the only damage that happened was to this top chest servo, the release servo. That's the noise you were hearing uh, once the skydiver hit the ground. This release bar isn't bent. It's kind of incredible that it, I, you, you would think it would be like top to, top of the over on itself, but it, it wasn't. So I spent the next five days making repairs. Honestly, I feel like I got kind of lucky, believe it or not. There wasn't, these weren't exactly easy fixes, but it could have been a lot worse. So less than a week later, we were ready for drop attempt number two, but this time I made two important changes. First, I put together a pre-flight checklist to help keep some organization during setup, you know, so I wouldn't forget a step like removing a freaking pin from the container before liftoff. And second, and most importantly, I ironically made perfect use out of the gift SpaceX gave me at last year's Starship presentation, attaching the remove before flight keychain to the weed eater line that I forgot to remove last time. It's like you can't even make this kind of stuff up. So a step in the right direction, obviously not the ideal flight, but at least the chute opened this time. And after analyzing some video, I found the problem. What exactly went wrong with the parachute um, to make it do like a helicopter thing that I did, a little twirly bird. So let's take this frame by frame. He's in mid free fall right, right meow. And right here, you can see that uh, top elastic cord for that flap spring open and out comes right here is the main parachute with the lines coming down to the drogue which will pop out here in a second there it is so the main is just kind of hanging out all uh, bundled up but the drogue is going to save the day or pilot shoot more accurately pilot shoot inflates pulls the the main chute up into the airstream where it quickly inflates see how that works science all right, so the main chute inflates. The opening to the cells or the leading edge of the parachute is facing down. And it just never recovers from that position. We start going into a twirl. You can see the left side of the parachute's kind of collapsed. It is a little bit on the right side as well. But if you look closely, like here's a pretty good shot right here. All the lines are straight. None of them are tangled. They run, they run clean to the risers. You can see what the problem is. These front lines, the A and B lines, are nice and tight and they allow for inflation, but the C and D lines are just too long. They allow too much slack, so to speak, too much, too much space for, their, for the middle of the, the parachute to crease and, and keep airflow from going to the back. So the length of the back lines are just too long to allow for that kind of crease in the parachute. Another issue is that the hand cam on the skydiver slipped off his arm and kind of got stuck in the in the right toggle line but i don't think that really caused much of much of an issue here you can see it pretty clearly right here from the front and the back of the chute if those rear lines were just shortened a couple inches then uh we probably would have had a clean opening but the thing is that the thing that is, is ironic is that if i I wouldn't have shortened those front lines to begin with. You remember back a couple episodes ago, I shortened those front lines. If I wouldn't have done that, this probably would have been a perfect opening. 
So now I'm going to have to shorten those, those rear lines to get them back to where they originally were. <laughs> So over the next couple days, I shortened those C and D suspension lines back to the length I originally had them. And we were shortly ready and back outside for drop three. One, release, deploy. Again, not a perfect flight, but another step in the right direction. At first I thought I had my toggle line trimming way off, but after looking at the replay, it turned out that a few rear suspension lines on the left side got caught up on each other. None were threaded through like you would find in a line over, but the knots I created when cutting and shortening those lines somehow, despite the hard and sudden opening, managed to just hang up onto each other. I couldn't believe how unlucky that was. So all I could really do to try and mitigate the issue was cut as much of the excess lines uh, to those knots off as I could. But other than that, all I could really do is hope to be a little less unlucky. But that wasn't to be. The next drop attempt was a nightmare. Instead of a 400 foot ceiling like the previous drops, this one I only planned to go to 200 feet. But once we got there, the drone battery started complaining it was low and that was manageable. But then the skydiver wouldn't respond to my wave inputs I do that prior to every release attempt just to be safe and make sure I have a connection with him. Yeah, he doesn't want to respond. Damn it. Landing. All right. So, you know, I brought him back down, replaced the drone's battery with a fully charged one and made sure we had a link with the receiver and then went up again. But this time, shortly after takeoff, the drone didn't want to raise any more altitude, which was a new problem. So again, I aborted to bring him back down, but once at around 300 feet, the drone's tow line snapped sending Bond down to his early grave. And go figure, he suffered more damage than what he did when he was dropped from 400 feet the first time. Breaking his legs off in three places, damaging an arm rod pin in one of his arms, popping his head off. Our pet's heads are falling off! But the worst part was that I accidentally broke one of his toggle lines carrying him back to the house. So now that too needed to be fixed and those are never an easy thing. But by this point, I was done trying to make the skydiver look as new as possible like I did last time. So I just took some wood glue to him the best I could and made the fixes without repainting him. And voila, he's back from the grave, back from the dead, and on we go to his final drop attempt. Say something. Something. Something clever. This is it. Fifth try, last attempt for this video. This better work. If it doesn't, screw it. Going balls out on this one, boys.
take it. I'll take it. All right. <laughs> So finally, we got some semblance of what this thing was designed to do from the very beginning. Obviously, we only had limited steering, but it was a low deployment because of the wind, so we didn't have much time to really see what we could really do with him. You can see just before touchdown, I managed to slow down his rate of turn, pulling hard on the left steering toggle. But the good news is those toggle lines can finally be trimmed to the correct length to make him fly straight. We just I just need to shorten the left toggle line there or lengthen the right one, but it'd probably be easier just to shorten the left one. In the future, I'll make that change to that line and hopefully every drop thereafter is picture perfect <laughs> in an ideal world. But that wraps up this series, guys. Um, it was a lot of fun. I learned a ton just as expected. And really that's what this is all about. Just doing something new so we can learn new things. And you always get new life experiences when it comes to engineering. You, know, you always walk away if not successful, at least more knowledgeable. And I feel like with this project, we were both successful and knowledgeable. Can we be more successful? Yes, but uh, that will come in the future. And, and if that comes for uh, his next flight or whatever flight that is in the future, I'll be sure to, sh I'll be sure to share it with you guys. Until that time, Godspeed.